Hi everybody, welcome to the MQE. Good afternoon. Uh, today we're going to go over some of the uh, workings of my brain and how we do seasonal products. Um, we're always trying to invent um, a way to approach flavors that are interesting and that speak of the time of year. So typically when there's a substantial change in the weather, we'll begin to think about uh, a seasonal bread change. Sometimes that'll happen twice within a season and sometimes that'll happen once in a season. We've been holding on to a, uh, a squash bread, which is where we make a flour out of, uh, out of dehydrated squash and we also make a, a liquid puree from the squash a juice that then gets fermented. They get combined and turned into a bread. We've been doing that for uh, several months now in the cold weather and now as we're looking towards spring we're trying to make some um, nice uh, changes towards something that will really you know, be exciting and taste delicious and also represent our uh, core beliefs in blended flours and slow fermentation. So uh, I've been doing experiments for the last few days and I've kind of narrowed it down to two concepts um, that both have a little bit of overlap. The overlap that they have is that we want to focus on some of the local honey as uh, springtime is uh, one of those um, really important periods where uh, uh, fertilization is happening with uh, the, the flowers that have come out and the bees will go around and, and do their uh, their magic. So we're taking some local New York honey, we have caramelized it and added water to it so you can see it's very loose but it's got a very big flavor. Um, so this will be going into both of the breads we do today. Additionally we're going to do one with orange blossom water and the idea here is that it is exactly that, it's blossom water, so we want to represent the flower, uh, we want to you know, capture some of the flavor of the flower. While oranges don't grow in New York, uh, the orange blossom water is very bright, lovely, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful sensation, the aroma and the, the taste of orange blossom, so uh, I want to incorporate that. One of the breads is going to have uh, a product called pistachio oil which is cold pressed uh, pistachio oil and uh, to complement this one we will be doing um, a pistachio milk alright so this is essentially pistachios that have been soaking overnight it's a raw pistachio that have been soaking overnight in water and we're going to puree that to make the, the pistachio milk and then for the other version it's going to be apricots now these are dehydrated apricots that have been reconstituted with water overnight and you can see they plump up nicely. Um, of the two varieties, I'm not sure which one I'm going to love the most, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to love them both. Uh, based on the test that I've already done, I know that I want to have some um, fruit forward qualities in either of the, the doughs and this uh, to get to sort of capture that effect uh, a little bit stronger. I'm doing a biga that actually has a lot of corn flour in it. And the corn flour, uh, when it's fermented after about 12 hours, it begins to give off characteristics of fruitiness, which is part of, uh, you know, you think of like bourbon. Uh, bourbon has some particularly sweet qualities to it, and that's by nature because of the corn fermentation. So, this biga will get split into two different doughs. And both of those doughs have the same um, different flours in them. So we've got a patent white flour, which would be very good for consistency when using something other than water as a hydra hydrating factor. In this case, obviously, we're going to do the apricot puree or the um, pistachio milk. So I'm going to use some patent flour. I'm going to use some whole wheat. I love the flavor of whole wheat. And then we've got a slightly sifted version of that whole wheat. These are both from New York State. And then I've got some buckwheat from New York State as well, and then of course a little bit of salt. But the yeast component will be the biga, just the biga. Both uh, breads have the same uh, different flour ratios in them because based on my experiments that I've done so far, I know that the texture that I'm going for is exactly this blend here. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the first one. Um, and so I'm going to take my soaked nuts and I'm going to put them, you can. You don't have to use a blender, uh, I, I like the, the, this particular brand, it's nice, um, it's a very nice blender, you don't have to, you can use a, an immersion blender or if you just got like a classic, you know, regular household blender, that will work too. Um, this one happens to be really fast and effective 
So it's going to get loud on my end. I guess from your end, you can turn the volume down if you want. But here we go. I usually start off slow so it doesn't splash up on me. Grind it a wee bit. And even though the nuts have been soaking, there's still going to be some solidness to them. And what's nice is we're doing this fresh. See, if you had done this the day before, it would then separate very quickly and it would then blend into your flowers differently than it will when you make a milk. So I like to make the milk fresh and put that into my flour to make my dough. It's nice to have a wet hand so it doesn't stick to your hand. Okay, that's close enough. All right. I'm going to add in my pistachio milk. Water, 25 grams. Okay. And then the orange blossom water. Very aromatic. I'm sure you can't smell it through the computer, but it smells nice over here. And it's getting the uh, pistachio oil very strong aroma from this stuff. Incredible. Like one little drop, the flavor is huge. So now I'm going to show you how we do a little hand mixing. Some of you do this all the time at home. Some of you may have my book where it shows, shows you how to, how to do it step by step. But I'm going to show you right now. And again, you may have seen me do this before, but it's basically the same process. So I'm going to start with um, all of my liquid ingredients, I've got my oil, I've got my uh, orange blossom water, I've got my biga, which has got corn in it, and then I've got my pistachio milk and my honey water. That's all going to get blended. And I'm going to break it up, break up that biga so it's really part of the liquid. That's going to make the whole process much easier. And from here, my flour goes in with my salt, and I'm going to start in the middle and incorporate the, uh, the flour into the wet. And this is going to have kind of a strange texture because it's not a, a normal method of hydration, so it will sort of slowly absorb that. And I'm also not doing a dough that's intended to be particularly wet. I'm not looking for a giant crumb structure. I'm just looking for a really deeply flavored dough. So after stirring with the spoon, then I begin to incorporate with my um, bowl scraper. From here, place it on the table, it's a little easier to see. I'll get the rest of my dry ingredients on the table. This 
smell is very strong. It's very nice. So I like to flatten it out. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. And then seam side up. Start the process again. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. I'm not sure if you can see it so well from the computer screen, but there's a very nice green color to this dough from the pistachio. Now when the dough comes out of the oven, that green is going to be a little bit subdued. It's not going to be as potent of a color, which is fine, but it will remain a little bit. So the people who eat it will be able to identify what it is before they even put it to their nose or their mouth. So I'm going to keep doing this for a minute, I'm trying to incorporate all of the dry ingredients that I have here. I get little chunks, I sometimes put the chunks on the top and the flour at the bottom to keep it from sticking to the table. Tuck, roll and tuck, roll and tuck. And starting to get a little uh, stiff and kind of difficult to, to do this process, so that's when I know it's basically finished. When you're doing this with a much wetter dough, it takes a little bit longer, and you end up with a different uh, characteristic to your dough. These are intended to be much stiffer and really going forward with flavor, not looking for big crumbs, I said, I'm, a tight crumb is okay. This one's going to be all about how it tastes and how it represents the season. So this we will set aside to ferment. Here in a few minutes I'm going to cover that up and let it ferment for about uh, 45 minutes. Then I'm going to fold the dough, let it ferment for another 45, and then uh, fold the dough again. And then after about 30 more minutes, I'll do the final shape. It will then go in the refrigerator to ferment for about 20 hours. It will then get baked and we'll give it a taste and see how it compares to the apricot. So now moving to the apricot. Firstly, I want to get the, the blender kind of cleaned off a little bit. So I'm just just for the sake of you not having to see me run back to the other side of the kitchen. I'm just going to put a pitcher and some water here. And if there's a trace amount of pistachio in there, I'm not worried about it, of course, because in the end we're going to decide between one or the other. We won't have to do this every day. Alright, so that's ready to go. I'm going to now So, apricots in the water have been soaking overnight, as I mentioned. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make apricot puree of dried apricots. This will probably blend a little faster than the pistachios because it's naturally a much softer product.
Amiga in there. And you'll note the size of this dough is really small. Um, that's because I don't like to waste food during the experiment. During the experimental, well, I don't like to waste food in general. But during the process where we're figuring out what the seasonal bread's going to be, we tend to do very small batches, tiny, tiny batches, and that will uh, actually change the nature of fermentation. If you've got a bigger batch of dough, it's always going to act differently than a smaller batch of dough. So I will take that into consideration, which is part of why you're seeing these doughs come across as a little bit stiff, because when you do a bigger batch, the hydrating qualities uh, end up changing as well. Okay, so we're going to add the honey water. I'm going to add my um, orange blossom water, and I'm also going to add my butter. Let me clean off my spoon. Real quick. So, if anybody's got any questions out there, please feel free to shoot them while we're. While we're doing this live, very happy to answer. Always excited to talk about bread. Or if you've ever worked with either of these products or any of these products before and you've got some feedback, some advice about what might help it come out better, I'm, I love learning things, so please pass on the good information. So here, again, I'm going to blend all the liquids. You see the butter is not really a liquid, but I like to incorporate the, buddy, the butter early on um, because it, it really saves the step of developing the dough and then adding the butter. And of course, if you're doing it in a machine, it doesn't really, like adding the butter at the end is very easy, you just toss it in, but when you're mixing by hand, it can be a lot easier, I've found, to add in the butter early, if it's not too much. If it's more than 15% uh, of the flour weight, then it does become a little bit challenging to develop the by hand. Okay, this has a very nice smell, apricot and orange blossom water, and I'm getting traces of that honey aroma. I'm going to add in my flowers and my salt, and do the process over that you just saw me do. Again, I'm not looking for a heavily hydrated dough. This is more on the stiff side. So we're just looking for big flavor. If we decide, if we go with one um, method that we decide is, is better and we want to stick with it and we decide we want to open up that crumb a little bit, then I'll probably do it by adding more of the, more water to the apricot. That would probably be the route I'd go because the other ones are more flavor components. You know, the honey water and the orange blossom water, I wouldn't want to add more of those because that's going to you know, set off the balance of flavors that we're looking for here. Okay, that's good enough to move to the table. Get the remainder of the flour. I don't know if you guys are used to working with buckwheat, but buckwheat is some sticky stuff. I love the flavor though. Great flavor. Get a little bit of this on my hand. And I start that process that we talked about a minute ago. Roll and tuck, roll and tuck, roll and tuck, roll and tuck.
So when we're doing the, the test for seasonal stuff, we take the time to think about the concept that we're trying to get across. In this case, I want the, the floral components of the blossom to be pronounced alongside the honey. I think that that's a nice way of, of you know, expressing respect for the bees and the hard work they do to make pretty much all food that we eat available to us. Um, and additionally, we think about the flavors that are going to represent uh, the bakery well and that are going to uh, pair off well with some of the other items that we have on the menu. So we've got a few other items that are going to be honey focused on this menu coming up. And uh, we've got a lot of whole wheat coming into this season's menu. So we're really trying to focus on the flavors of wheat and honey. And uh, so that's why you see those those kind of being the, uh, the backdrop themes to what we're doing here. We do that all the time. We sort of get something in our heads and try to roll with it as far as we can, still respecting slow fermentation and digestibility of dough, of, of bread rather, and what we have to do to the dough to make it the most digestible product we possibly can. Keep in mind, wheat is a, it's a grass, so you're eating grass seeds essentially, and the human body is, has gotten used to eating this for many, many thousands of years, but it's still, you know, you have people coming up with wheat issues sometimes, and so what we try to do is really ferment it as long as possible, We're trying to get the flavors to peak, the aromas to peak and for the, the dough itself to be essentially digested by the enzymes that happen, that, that, that tear down the, uh, the starches and convert them into simple sugars so that they can then be consumed by the yeast and the bacteria. That happens best if you give it a long period of time, and in order to give it a long period of time without over-fermenting uh, over quickly but on the yeast side of it, then you got to uh, put it in the refrigerator or a cool part of the house. Maybe you have a cellar that's cool. But again, this is going to get about 20 hours of fermentation further after it has its floor time. And you have the test narrowed down to two different doughs at this point. Um, I think I know which one's going to win just because I know what smells better right now to me, but they're both great doughs, so uh, we'll see how they come out of the oven if we want to make any adjustments and what we're happy with, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. This is basically a glimpse inside my head and how we uh, operate at Bianqui and continually trying to invent new ways to experience flavor in, um, in very big measurement and yet with uh, maximum digestibility and uh, hopefully you can come by and pick up one of these spring breads when they're available. That'll be in about, uh, about one month. So thanks for tuning in and uh, hope to see you soon.